My dear brothers and sisters, if you listen to the media these days in the United States, there has been so much talk lately about Muslims trying to impose the Sharia law in the United States. It sounds so funny. There are some forces in this country are trying to instill fear in the minds of millions of Americans by raising such topic. Muslims imposing Sharia law in the United States. And unfortunately, there are some people who are influenced by the, that kind of talk, who are really concerned that Muslims are invading the United States and soon they will impose the Sharia law. Well, first of all, Muslims in their own countries were not able to impose the Sharia law, not alone the United States. Number two, in the United States, there is one law, and that is the law of the land. That is the laws of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the United States would prohibit imposing any laws other than the laws of the United States. So even to talk about that subject is a kind of wasting time. Because there is no such thing exist, nor it will exist, because by the laws of the United States, no laws are recognized in this country other than the secular laws of the United States. Now, I would like to shed some lights on the Sharia law. When they say Sharia law, Sharia law, what do they mean by, the, by this word? I think most of those who talk about the Sharia law, they don't even know what they are talking about. But to clarify the, the concept Sharia law, Sharia law means Islamic laws. Now we have a three types of Islamic laws. Listen to this. The first type of Islamic laws pertain to the Muslim individual as, individ as an individual. For example, rules pertaining to your prayer, to your fasting, to your hajj. These are Islamic rules pertaining to the Muslim individual as an individual. Now anything wrong? with a Muslim practicing that kind of laws in the United States? Of course, no. Just like Christians practice their own Christian laws, just like the Jewish people practice their own Jewish laws pertaining to their religion, Muslims have the right to practice their Islamic laws pertaining to their individuals. Just like an average Jew has the right to worship God the way he wants, a Muslim individual has the right to worship God the way he wants. Just like a Christian person has the right to exercise his Christianity, a Muslim person has the right to exercise his religion in this country. Indeed, that right is a sacred right and it is protected by the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States protects this kind of, these kind of laws, religious freedom. Every individual in the United States has the right to practice his faith the way he wants. There are people in Tennessee whose way of worshiping God, or God, probably the devil, I'm not sure who they worship, is by playing with snakes. No one stops them, no one prohibits them. That's how they carry their, their faith. Dancing, dancing with uh, snakes. Indeed, there was a documentary in Discovery Channel about them the other day. Now, no one will make an issue of these people dancing with snakes 
And no one is saying that why these people are practicing this faith. Because they live in the United States and every individual in this country has the freedom of practicing his or of his, his faith the way he sees fit. Now there is another type of Islamic laws pertaining to the society, social laws. Be nice to your, be kind to your neighbor. Reach out to the poor. Feed the hungry. Offer shelter to those who have no homes. These are the social laws of Islam. Now, anything wrong with these laws? These are universal laws. These are universal values that most American people believe in. Believe in. These are shared values be, be, between humankind. There is nothing wrong with that. Indeed, many Americans are involved in charity and philanthropic works. There is nothing wrong with that. Now, there is one more type of Islamic laws, the political laws pertaining to the state. For example, the laws implemented in a country like the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now, the first condition for these laws to be implemented is that the nation has to be predominantly Muslim. That's number one. Number two, as the case is in Iran, 98 or 99 percent of people in Iran are Muslims. The second condition that there should be a referendum in which people would vote to accept applying these kind of laws something that took place in iran 30 years ago in the beginning of the revolution now we live in a non-muslim country so the first condition is missing therefore you cannot impose these kind of laws the political laws of islam and therefore it doesn't mean anything to say that there are muslims trying to impose the sharia law with that sense in the political sense because Muslims admit the first condition to imp implement these kind of laws is that the nation that we impose these laws on have to be Muslim. We have 1% of Americans are Muslim, if not less. So we cannot, Muslims will not ask for such a thing. Therefore, I think this discussion about the Sharia law is aimed at one thing only and what one thing to scare people off from Islam and to scare people away from Islam and to increase and instill hatred in the minds and hearts of Americans against Islam and it is so unfortunate to see people like Newt Gingrich the former speaker of the house senator Sharon Angle, a senator from, a U.S. senator from, uh, I guess, uh, the Sin City, what is it called, the, huh? Nevada. And people on that caliber talking about Muslims imposing Sharia ah law in Dearborn. They can come to Dearborn, they can come and visit Dearborn and see themselves with their own eyes that there is no such a thing. Indeed, we had the mayor of Dearborn yesterday here speaking to a huge number of people, community leaders who gathered here. We have the U.S. laws implemented in Dearborn. Indeed, our scholars, all our maraja, our scholars say that those Muslims who live in the West in the United States particularly, they have to abide by the laws of the land. They have to abide by the laws and rules implemented in the United States. And going against these laws are a sin. This is what many of our scholars are saying. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I'm sure you will be asked that question by many people in this country. 
What is this Sharia law thing you Muslims are trying to implement? There is no such a thing. Our enemies, unfortunately, are trying to use this propaganda to tarnish the image of Muslims, to depict us as a fanatics, as fanatics, as extremists, and also to question our loyalty to this country. And we should not let them do that. My final comment, my dear brothers and sisters, many people are asking about the visit, the intended visit by Pastor Terry Jones. I mentioned two weeks ago, I spoke about that. And I said we should ignore this guy and not give him much attention. Some people misinterpreted what I meant. They thought what we meant by that, that we're not going to do anything at all. If he comes here to the Islamic Center, we will not have any kind of gathering. That's not what I meant, my dear brothers and sisters. What I meant is that this man should not be the center of attention. We need to clarify to American people what Sharia law is. We need to educate them. And of course, we will take this opportunity, the visit by this person, to further educate Americans about our faith. So the, the attention should be centered on the American people, not on Terry Jones. That's what I meant. We should not get into reactionary mode. He attacks us and we attack him. That's what I meant. Because then, if we do that, we are feeding into his propaganda. We are boosting his agenda. And that's what, he, that's what he wants. He's looking for notoriety. And he is aiming at provoking us. And we shall, we shall not let him achieve neither goal. We should not let him provoke us. Nor we should let him that opportunity to promote himself in the media. So, of course, there will be actions taken by, by the Islamic Center and community leaders and even by many Christian leaders who came and visited the Islamic Center and they expressed their unresolved support for the Islamic Center. They said, we will be standing with you. I have been receiving many, many calls and emails, mostly from non-Muslims, pastors, head of churches, ordinary citizens who are telling me that, Imam, we are 100% behind you. We will support you. And if you call on us, we are willing to come with our own congregations and stand by you. And we salute these people. We have many friends Many people are abhorred with what Terry Jones has been doing. The man burned the Quran last week. What happened? 22 innocent people in Afghanistan were killed. We hold this lunatic person the responsibility. Yet we condemn these killings. We believe that there was no justification whatsoever for killing these innocent people these were workers who are who, who have been working diligently at the united nation offices in afghanistan these people should have been rewarded for their work not killed unfortunately they were attacked by mobs by lunatics like terry jones but in the end terry jones takes the blame for inciting such hatred in afghanistan and elsewhere for it was not for his incendiary, incendiary rhetoric, there would have been no killing. And I'm afraid there would be more killing if this man will continue his stupid actions. We will call on you, my dear brothers and sisters. Next week, we will tell you exactly what the plan is if this man will continue to uh, his plan. Because as of now, we have heard that he, is, he might not be coming to the Islamic Center Rather, he may go to the uh, city hall. So if it's confirmed that the man is coming to the Islamic Center, 
We will let you know of our plan, my dear brothers and sisters. We will have gatherings on Thursday, the day before, the Good Friday, and on a Friday. And inshallah, we will disclose that next Friday. We will tell you exactly what the plan is, and we want your support, and we want your help. Allahumma aghfir lil mu'mineena wal mu'minat, wal muslimina wal muslimat, al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك قاضي الحاجات إنك على كل شيء قدير وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ولشفاء مرضانا وقضاء حوائجنا نقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر